First thing in the morning, basically you just kind of walk the line, make sure everything's set up. Operators usually have questions about, hey, how about this? We get that dialed in. Once you get that dialed in, we go to, I move to the filler, and then we go to the packer, and all the way to the robot. People do not like to manually palletize, so people do want a machine to do it anyway, because it's very cold in here and it's very back baking. Look, the, the cases are too heavy for a human to manually palletize all day long. It started with identifying a new process that was going to be more flexible than we have right now. We realized that we were going to need a piece of packaging equipment, a whole line actually, that was going to be able to case pack and palletize several different products. They uh, knew they wanted to run corrugate cases with their uh, 59 ounce package and then half gallon milk for their traditional dairy style milk jugs. They wanted to run both on a single line, but the conventional palletizing would not work. So we looked at using the robotic palletizer as the right solution for this application. When we talked to Kendall and we started talking about different types of robots that were available, Kuku was really the only one out there that had a robot that was capable of performing at the speeds we needed to run at, and it was big enough and strong enough to be able to handle the loads that was freezer rated, the water with wash downs and, and all the things that we normally see in our dairies. Within a food facility, some of the things we have to do different than a typical robotic cell is all our uh, contact parts have to be either stainless steel or anodized aluminum. And with the harsh environments, the chemicals they use to clean it will take the paint off a car. So one of the big considerations is trying to make sure that the system won't rust over the years because it is in a wet, cold environment. At first, when we brought it in, the majority of the folks were scared because of, because of the new technology. They took it as a challenge and they wanted to learn as much as they could and they dug in. It was a challenge to try and get everybody set up on them because uh, there's just a lot of things to, for me, for one, being dry and coming into looking at this thing, it took a little while for me to get it. Once I got a little hang of it, you know, through IPM and helping me out, um, I was able to show the operator a little bit more and we picked a lot of stuff up. At the end of run, what we normally do, there's a couple buttons the operator has to hit to do a changeover on uh, the tooling. And basically you hit the, a button, the robot head comes down, picks up another head, takes that back up to the pick position, and you're pretty much done. We've realized that if we can kind of model our process over what we've done with the robot, start requiring the same quick change capability, we wouldn't have been able to do all the different things that we do in the footprint we do right now without that robot.